Wow. Hi everyone. Today I want to share with you a funny situation where I was forced to play the Slayer lane as Delchan. I think this is going to be a great game showing how working as a team rather than flaming each other can help us get through situations. A draft is a very squishy draft. Everyone was very confused also with the Raz pick, but um, during the finalization stage I told that Raz, I'm going to go Slayer lane, you go ahead and go in the mid lane. Raz's early game is a very strong hero, so I think that's going to be a good choice for us. And I'm not going to try to beat Ryoma, Ryoma to the second level. Um, the idea is for me to just play safe and whittle down that particular lane. So, going to come over here and help Lindis out a little bit. In this matchup, I can just use my freezes and if I have my first ability just to poke down the wave. I don't really need to do anything overly dangerous. And the idea is that if I can just be steady and farm up, Raz and the jungler can go focus the abyssal lane and get advantage. This is why right now I was typing to tell Raz to help out the bottom more. And um, what's great is he's going to reply back and say, okay, no problem. He gets it, he'll go back. To me, this is the kind of communication that signals to me that I'm dealing with a pretty, you know, pretty good teammate. Um, you know, even though maybe we're not individually strong, but at least we work with each other to uh, make the best of our situation, right? So here I'm just going to find ways to poke him out and see if I can get that bird from him. So I'm saving up my first ability just to do that. Even if I can't get the bird, I can just nick him a little bit and deal a little bit of damage. So the fight that just broke out right now, Raz got drawn first blood. Lindis retaliates with the butterfly and I'm gonna pan over to just take a look at what's the situation. So it looks like Tulin is gonna rotate over here. I can go ahead and kill this Tulin for my kill steal. Nice. And um, because I've stayed relatively healthy, I can also help out in this fight. For a moment, I definitely thought about flickering over here, but it seems like we have enough slows to be able to catch up to him. Maybe the Ryoma hasn't bought boots yet. I gotta hit level four here with this next wave and so now with my little power spike i thought maybe we can go make a play butterfly looks like she's clearing mid and i think she's gonna rotate top so here we go i'm gonna make a play but i forgot to factor in butterfly's ultimate and really miss that freeze that's really gonna be too bad my flicker was used to conserve my ultimate but in hindsight i probably should have recognized that there was a last fight and just flicker over the wall to save myself Coming back to the top lane, I catch the last of my wave and I just start to um, then poke out this bush where I see Ryoma entering the bush just to whittle him down a little bit. Ryoma's passive gives him a pretty long reach so I'm trying to stay out of his way. I'm not going to respond to Rui's ultimate. This is because I think that I've already cleared my top wave and it's going to be a little while before it comes back. I think in hindsight it didn't end up to be a very very good play because right now nobody is defending that top side jungle. Over here I deliberately had made the stop so that Raz can catch up to me in case Butterfly was ambushing us. Here's another ambush spot. We've talked about this one and indeed Ryoma is in there. I thought he'd be in there because the top wave is already pushed in and he was missing. I actually put the freeze down just to put some distance between myself and him but he rolled in and uh, I end up getting a nice little kill and helping Linda's over here to also clear. Ooh, that little first ability there, I thought I was not going to come so close to killing the blue buff, but that was a tad close indeed. As I finished clearing my wave, first thing I was doing is checking to see if Ryoma is still uh, standing around here looking to ambush me. And then the next thing I did was pan down bottom and I kind of concluded that maybe the Raz wasn't a very good composition to go help the bottom lane. It, or at least the synergy wasn't really there. So I suggested maybe that we would switch. I think the switch was definitely a good call, but I ended up being too naughty. I came back to try and kill this Ryoma and it didn't notice that the Tulan was right there waiting to kill me. From a team's perspective, we did not do a good job defending our towers at all, even though we got one tower, but we lose three because we didn't clear the waves. Jumping ahead, we are really quite under farm compared to the enemy. You see at one point the enemy butterfly is at 7k gold, while the rest of us are just starting to break 4k. We're gonna start turning it around though. 
After defending this bottom tower, I noticed that the butterfly is moving across to the blue side of our jungle camp. So I'm also going to move across in case the butterfly decides to ambush uh, Lindus at the blue camp. Indeed here we see butterfly doing just that. But the HP differential between the butterfly and Lindus means that butterfly will probably not press forward and I can make this ambush play instead. Yeah, so Elandor showed himself up uh, at the Abyssal Dragon when he killed it. That was what the announcement said, right? Then I could conclude that his little convoy is going to move across the middle lane. Waiting for a minion wave, we're gonna come out here to steal the blue buff and instead we find ourselves a very nice lucky freeze onto the Tulan. Our situation is now a 4v2 and I know as the wave comes in, the Ryoma is going to jump in to try and clear it. So I hid in the bush just so that Ryoma isn't really anticipating my freezes and then pop out as he commits to the wave. The next play here is going to be pushing in the waves and maybe contesting over this Abyssal Dragon. Several things are going to happen in the next little sequence. Lindus pushes the top wave in deep and so she attracts a lot of enemies. My team is going to follow and possibly initiating a team fight. I spot Butterfly in the middle. I want to take this opportunity to split the lane and push. This might attract the Butterfly over to my lane so I'm going to move into this bush just to take a look at what Butterfly chooses to do. Indeed she chooses to um, come and defend this tower and because the team fight didn't happen I now have an opportunity opportunity to ambush the butterfly as she moves across the map again. But oh no, ambushing 101, uh, Lindus the cavalier she is, charges in right on ahead before my freeze can set, and we end up fighting this very unfavorable fight. I probably should have backed out very much long ago, but instead um, I was like, ah, oh, maybe I'll do one more poke, and then Rui was like, yeah, I'll do another poke too, and then <laughs> enemy triple kill. Wow, I was pretty tilted at this moment. I was very confident I had the ambush just by myself. The trick was to let Butterfly commit. I wanted to see her walk across or jump onto that minion. I wasn't quite sure which one it is and I needed to wait. But yeah, she saw Lindis and I didn't get my freeze. Fortunately, our revival times are all fast enough to then help us defend the core. So they get a high ground tower for this, but at least it wasn't game over. Red side now has an opportunity to lay a siege onto our core, or they chose the bot lane, which is to basically push in the towers a little bit. Lindis does a really cool thing over here. She puts a trap near the place where people might funnel in. I don't know if she did this on purpose, but anyway, um, Butterfly actually walks right through it. That was weird. Anyway, I do think the, um, the enemies were just a little bit too eager, I suppose, because maybe what the move should be here is that Ryoma jumps in, followed by Pyrrha with her ultimate and heals, and then Butterfly could just linger in the back and kill us as she sees that I have expended all of my ice. There was a lot of just poking and prodding and waiting for the major objectives. I try again trying to catch the people walking through this channel but unfortunately Tulin paused to poke the bush and now we're in a funny situation because both Ru and I got the memo to get out of there and uh, we left with right behind. Fortunately for us, Butterfly jumps in, again way too eager, and uh, with the little Rui stun over there, we were able to secure that kill. Now it's just the two of us trying to defend against three people. I think over here what would have been a lot more scary for me was if the Ryoma just jumps in and uh, Pyrrha, their Pyrrha should just, you know, also jump in. With the two dives, I'm pretty sure the two of them would have been able to kill us and the wave would crash. If the Ryoma was still alive and the Landor could get here on time, that is probably a core push done right there. As the rest of our team respawns, we get the information that Elandor was just killing the Abyssal Dragon. This gives us an opportunity to come and camp out this Slayer. And it's feeling really good right now because everyone is uh, following together in a group and we're playing as a team. Pyrrha, Elandor, and Butterfly all show up on the screen and it's awesome because they're split apart. Butterfly is one on three and here we have the vision to be able to make the ambush play. 
I miss, however, the Land Orb getting back up with the Blade of Eternity and end up letting Arui die because of that fault. It's an unfortunate thing, but uh, at least we get the Slayer safe and sound. Now it's our turn to attack. There's not a whole lot to be said about the 4 on 2 over here. It's a pretty standard push, not, nothing too fancy. But I do love this little Arctic Orb here from the Tulin, saving him from my other teammates by allowing me to end up killing him instead. In the final fight, we end up catching this overextended butterfly and vision on the Tulin. I'm not really sure what ended up uh, providing us the vision on the Tulin, but uh, I expand all my freeze and so I'm just going to do an area alt to kill this butterfly. And now I just need to control this bottleneck with some freezes and uh, pokes to make sure this Ryoma is the only one getting focused down by our main battlefront. I'm not going to chase down this Tulin so that we can have a clear path to victory through the mid lane, but he's going to land his first ability on me and I have to really watch out for his ult. Elandor appears out of nowhere and comes in to try to kill me, but thankfully the Wisp was there to save my behind. All the while, Lindus has already peeled back to defend the Elandor backdoor push. This was super crucial. Not only did it save us from the backdoor, it also freed up this mid wave. Just these two cute little minions so that we can actually go for the win. Rui drops her ultimate and Lindus is going to come flying in. I get a nice lucky freeze onto the Tulin. Not that we really needed it, but uh, that will secure the game. And now going on to just share a little bit about my life. Over the weekend, uh, we actually ended up not being able to start our car because of the cabin light being left on overnight. And uh, it was going to be a real hassle because we had front in our car into the garage and we couldn't really figure out how to put it in neutral to push it out and ask our neighbors for help. I ended up buying this little cool portable car battery jumper. You can charge it with normal USB and then there's a special cable that amplifies it to give enough juice to jumpstart your car. I hope everyone could at least know about this product because it was just so helpful to me. I think this is a little something for my mom also because in the past one of her nightmares was driving our car in the winter and having the car refuse to start when she's say out shopping. That's it for this week and I'll see you on Thursday for the stream.